Okay, we're gonna start the hormone again. Like um, look at the hormonal control of blood pressure. So this is gonna be setting more your normal blood homeostasis for a longer uh, period, not just immediate changes. Okay, so this is kind of more like your set point blood pressure, um, things like that. Okay, so we're gonna start the pathway looking at the angiotensin pathway. Okay, so that's the angiotensin pathway, which is explained in words in this slide like 10 okay but then these words go with the steps match and go with um, this figure okay so I'm gonna now talk about this figure uh, talk about this figure um, and you have the words okay so you can kind of go along with that as well okay so let's take a look at what this is um, let me get a pen to draw Okay, I'm gonna use this purple pen to kind of help you point to a few ideas because everything else is color coordinated. Okay, so this system is actually really, really, really important. Okay, so you wanna learn about it in nursing school, you're gonna constantly be hearing about the RAS, RAS. So what is RAS, okay? So this is blood pressure using the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, okay, RAS. Okay, so Renin is an enzyme, but the two hormones are angiotensin is a hormone, so I'm gonna circle that, and aldosterone is a hormone. And if you remember from the chart, both of this hormone is to increase blood pressure. Okay? So both of these hormones increase blood pressure. So if you know that part, you can always work backwards, right? So once you know that, okay, if the end goal is to increase blood pressure, well, what did I start out with and what's my end goal, okay? So my end goal is that all these factors is going to increase blood pressure in the end. So for, if I start at step one, my ending point is to increase blood pressure. Okay, so then you know that it started off because your blood pressure must be too low for homeostasis for this to be turned down. So step one, the stimulus to turn this system on is low blood pressure, okay? So when this is, again, remember, prolonged low blood pressure is bad because your body's not getting the, enough oxygen or ATP delivered to allow um, the person to function. So the low blood pressure is the stimulus. That, okay, so the, as blood pressure is circulating through the body, the liver and the kidney are both saying, ooh, that blood pressure is too low. I must raise it, right, to the, in the end. So liver will release what is called angiotensinogen, okay? It's gonna generate angiotensin, but it itself is not angiotensin. This is a pre hormone not active hormone. So it's gonna release angiotensinogen, and the kidney, at the same time, is gonna release renin, which is an enzyme, so that's why it's an orange, it's not a form. So when you have a substrate of angiotensinogen with the enzyme, you end up with a product at step four, and that's angiotensin one. So angiotensin one is still not the active hormone. It is the pre hormone Then the lastly, what's gonna have to come in is the lungs. The lungs is gonna release an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, okay? So ACE is gonna come in and convert angiotensin one to angiotensin two at step six, and this is the active hormone. So sometimes you'll see me or others refer to as angiotensin two, but if it's just referred to as angiotensin, it is, this means the angiotensin two, the active form, okay? In other cases, if you see angiotensin mentioned other than angiotensin two, it will have a one to know that on it. So now we have step six, the active angiotensin hormone. So this is the active hormone. What does it do, okay? Angiotensin two is not in your body circulating. So it's gonna create a number of responses because it has a number of target sites. So at step seven, we're looking at the responses to angiotensin two. One of the side of action is the vessels. So one of the response tissue is the vessels. And the vessels are gonna to respond to angiotensin by vasoconstriction angiotensin, vessel, angios, vessel, tensin is tension, 
We're going to increase the tension, and that's going to increase blood pressure. Okay. The second one is to the adrenal gland, the adrenal cortex. Okay, releasing the hormone aldosterone. Okay, so you're going to increase the release of aldosterone. Remember from the last chart that aldosterone also increases blood pressure, so it's going to help his body, uh, the angiotensin, to both together increase blood pressure. And the way aldosterone increases blood pressure is to increase water and salt retention. Remember, aldosterone from unit one is a mineral corticoid. So it's gonna really, uh, retain the water in the body, which then increases blood volume and increases blood pressure. The last side of action is in the posterior pituitary gland, right here. So this is the PP. Okay, and the posterior pituitary gland is gonna release the hormone ADH or antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, vessel pressure, and that's going to increase. So antidiuretic means you're against diuretic or anti-P, okay? That's my little mnemonics, remember, you're anti-P, so it means that you're going to retain water, urinate less, and that's going to increase blood pressure. All three of this with vessel constriction and the retention of water leads to the increase in uh, blood pressure in the system. Once homeostasis is returned, it will negatively feed back and shut off these three glands and say, okay, that's good, we're in, the, I, uh, we're in good blood pressure now. If the blood pressure drops down again in the patient, the system will come again, angiotensin will be made through these steps, and the angiotensin will increase blood pressure, causing uh, an increase in the blood pressure. Okay. So that's the angiotensin pathway. Uh, you want to draw this, you want to practice, you want to know which organs are involved, and there's a number of questions here for you to practice um, those concepts. Again, and these will be repeated on the practice quiz to allow you to practice more and understand the pathway better. Okay, it's, again, it's not a hard pathway. Really think about what is the end goal and how you're going to get there. Okay, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions.